Well, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, my name is Dahmer. Uh, actually, I'm going by many different names now. <laughs> um, but let me get to how I became, as some of you may know, more than likely most of you don't, Dom Douglas. Uh, right around the time I stopped uploading videos, I moved in with a couple friends, got into um, independent wrestling. I am a commentator, play-by-play -play guy now um, for a couple of promotions. We reopened the world back up after the pandemic, and then we're about to close it back down, I feel, a little bit. So we can't have nice fucking things. If you didn't know, this is Goblin Grenade Podcast, and fuck it, why not? We're here. Tons of stuff to unpack. I'm not going to lie. I need to preface this with this. Still a one-man podcast, so if anybody wants to be a co-host or whatnot, get at me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> since the time of my last video upload, uh, which was Magic the Gathering related, I think, I've fallen out of love with Magic the Gathering for a bit. I was st I'm still playing Arena. I'm still playing mainly due to being only able to play Arena and play Standard. Um, I built like my mono red burn deck just to have a mono just to have a modern deck and barely got to use the damn thing also after my hip replacement i got into commander because of game nights because well you know i had nothing to do for a few weeks while i was on the uh bed resting up from that uh so i got into commander and that's been an amazing experience so far but you know i get into commander and you know lo and behold a few months later Everything closes down. So I spent a lot of time making commander decks, watching commander's quarters, game nights. I hate your deck and made like 24 something commander decks at one point. Many failed attempts at videos about doing that stuff too. And no one to play with. And recently, you know, we got to, you know, go outside and be human beings again. And, you know, I'm a little pissed off that I, I get the distinct feeling that that's going to end soon again, as far as we know it. I don't think it's going to be a full shutdown, but, you know, I think we're going to go back to, like, a phase three type of shit. So I'm still not happy. The shitstorm in the last 18 months has been mainly being isolated. Have you ever tried to run independent wrestling events in a closed venue? It's not fucking fun. That When the world was shut down, locked down, I got to, you know, edit up and film Something for a promotion called USA Main Event, Thursday Night Thunder. For the better part of, I think, like six to eight months, we didn't miss a week. Uh, Pre-taped everything, you know, closed venue, no audience. Had everybody wear masks and whatnot. So it's doable. It just kind of fucking sucks when you have no audience there. This is, that sound was me smacking my pad of no notes that I take. And we're going over a lot. Obviously, the Magic the Gathering Arena playing in the background because I don't do video stuff because why would I? I'm going to attempt to take these in the order that they came out in. Um, some of them are going to have to be a little quicker than others because, you know, it's way past news. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the failed action RPG game that Wizards did that didn't even get out of beta and it's closed. Well, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Wizards doesn't have a good track record when it comes to video game IP stuff. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago when... They did the revamp duels where you can buy packs and whatnot on console. And, you know, I'll load that up like once every year or so just to see how it is. And, you know, not for nothing, they, they kind of beta tested Arena way before they beta tested Arena. Um, if you have it and if you have access to it, you can tell they were working on the Arena. But they can't they canceled that shit quick. And, you know, they canceled this game and it didn't even get out of fucking beta. And don't even get me started on... uh. The Boulder's Gate game that came out on console. What a shit show that was. I was excited for it because my favorite games of all time, obviously, are action RPGs. Mainly, I refer to them as Diablo clones because that's the style that I like. And Boulder's, uh, Boulder's Gate games on the action RPG front on console were some of my favorite Diablo clones of all time. I saw this and I played it day one when it came out on Game Pass and I got two missions in, shut it off and deleted it. I was, I, I told people it was 
disappointing to say the least. A lot of weird shit going on. You can change the controls, but I don't know whose bright idea it was to have the default attacks being right trigger and right bumper. But, you know, they can change to an easier layout for you. It, there's just a lot of weirdness about it. N not fun at all. It's just a very boring experience. So I was like, and buggy as shit, not gonna lie. I got one of my achievements for getting like a three, four, five hundred something hit combo by continuously hitting a piece of scenery. I, that's how I got my max combo. So <laughs> go me. You know, I was like, I'm gonna give it a few weeks. A few weeks comes around, a couple patches get introduced, a couple updates. I downloaded it again and immediately turned it off after like, I don't, I, I think I finished one mission this time. So I got three missions in, so I can't really give an honest review. I can just tell you how I feel. I think, I think it was garbage. So that's a one talking point down, many more to go. <laughs> when it comes to Magic the Gathering, I felt power creep, obviously, as most of us did, was getting a little too outrageous. And I think Adventures in Forgotten Realms might be this easing off the foot, as you will, for power level in Standard. Uh, a format that I almost never play anymore unless I'm playing Arena. I, I get the distinct feeling because there's like some powerful cards in there, but they're priced accurately. And it's not like walls of text. I mean, yes, yeah, Xanathar has a wall of text on it, but Xanathar is, does Xanathar things, and it's stupid. You know, some of the dragons even, unlike Questing Beast, which is the, the linchpin for walls of text, they're not in, infinitely overpowered. Even like the, the, the blue mythic dragon, you know, with the word four, as long as it's untapped, as long as it's untapped. And it still has to tap to attack. So, you know, I, I really feel a Adventures in Forgotten Realms, I am hoping, is the slowing down of the power creep and getting back to a little bit normal. Even like Core 21 had power creep dumb shit in there. So, you know, I'm hoping it's a, it's a right path. I, I'm in love with the draft right now. I'm so enamored with AFR draft. My personal experiences, and I usually do better in core sets anyway, and this is like a core set in spirit, even though it's got some complicated mechanics in it. You know, I'm I'm having a blast, and I don't do the archetypes most of the time. I'll, I'll be honest with you, my secret tech is Demir. <laughs> um, because Demir's been written off so much, you get so many of the decent Demir cards, and you you some there's been a draft or two where I've banked on Demir early on in the hopes of pack two and three getting past like pick three, pick four, dumb shit like Xanthar. It's happened. And <laughs> when it happens, you just go, all right, I'm at least going to win four games here. It, I'm having a lot of fun too with the set. The dungeon mechanics great in draft. I'm having fun with Adventures of Forgotten Realms. So I'm hoping it's the beginning of the cool off of Power Creek, because I think we were getting a little too ridiculous, and the fact that they had to release, I guess, in Arena, <laughs> Standard 2022, for, like, this special window, which is just post-rotation, because everyone is so sick and fucking tired of Throne of Eldraine, and I'm not gonna say... Throne of Eldraine is great. I kind of have a real love, adoration, and a pure seething hatred with this set. It's gone on too long. It's been the scourge of the format for the better part of a year and a half, ever since release. And when it's set released, it didn't seem as if it was that powerful. Yeah, Questing Beast was stupid. You know, Oka was stupid. You know, now, now looking at it, like... Yeah, maybe the set was a little too much, but, you know, that's why I have a love-hate relationship with it as much as I do. It's single-handedly my most adored set and also my most loathed set. I despise Throne of Eldraine and I praise Throne of Eldraine at the same time. And that's very rare for me because I'm usually like, I'm in love with it or I fucking hate it. So yeah, you know, since um, Standard, you know, since the shutdown and whatnot and getting it heavily into Commander, I really don't play, I really don't play Standard unless I'm playing Arena. And I got really into Commander. I'm serious. I, my two favorite Commanders right now, and I, out of, I broke a few of them up because I just couldn't justify having 24 fucking Commander decks. My main deck is Admiral Beckett Brass. It's you know, pirates, pirate tribal. And I kind of built that from the ground up, but I'm pretty sure I saw a Commander's Quarters video on it. And I was like, man, that seems fun. And it's been fun. Doesn't win for fuck all. 
Um, but I get the fact that I get to do cool, dumb commander shit with it. D- really dumb shit. Dockside Extortionist. I'm so glad I bought that particular commander deck when I did. <laughs> because that card is stupid. And I don't, th- I don't think it deserves to be banned. Kind of like a uh, whole breacher got banned. Um, I don't believe in wheels being banned either. Um, but whole breacher, I think kind of like needed to get banned. But once again, it's a casual format. Remind yourself of this before you make a big fucking stink about certain things. Talk to your play group and see if they're okay with you playing. Because the ban lists are just for competitive EDH. If you're playing competitive EDH, it is a completely different monstrosity than normal ass commander. Competitive EDH is its own format. But, you know, the ban list from the rules committee, which does not have an easy job. Yeah, I think some of y'all... um act like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it like this, neckbeard man children, and complain a little too hard about something that you don't need to complain that hard about. I mean, these last 18 months have shown me there's way much more shit to be complaining about that's justified than having fucking Hole Breacher banned in your competitive EDH format. And none of you have played competitive EDH in a tournament type of setting. I'm just saying, bro. Talk to your play group and see if it's okay. Most of the time, we fucking are. So there's that checklist. All right. Um, This is probably going to be the most hyped, animated, and not for nothing, hot take. Like, th- th- I'm going to get pissed off talking about this. So let me shift back into Commander. Um, I even got my girlfriend into Commander. Um, She likes... Kaiju. She's a big Godzilla Kaiju fan. So she didn't even play. She was just kind of like hanging out watching me play. And next thing I know, um, I'm winding up making a Ghidorah King of the Cosmos deck with all the other Kaiju that she bought. And now I'm actively looking for other Kaiju from playgroups to buy so I can continue building her Kaiju deck. It's dumb in 1v1. Right now, though, I don't know how it's going to take to a normal pod. Uh, four, uh, because it's definitely slowish to start. Um, the mutate mechanic isn't as pronounced in here as I would like. Um, but it, you know, it, it's, I helped her build it basically. And it's kind of fun. She only plays commander every now and again, when we see each other, that, 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 that's the cool part of commander. Um, now the uncool part, and I just wanted to end Commander. I wanted to end it on that, like making this Ghidorah deck, which is stupid as shit. And I love it. And it's fun. Because once I start talking about Jumpstart Historic Horizons or whatever bullshit that they're about to fucking ruin Historic in Arena with. um, Fuck every single one of these digital cards. Fuck in perpetuity. Fuck the stupid Dervel Commander with the fucking web pages long full laundry list of bullshit fuck whatever other ability it has where some of the cards can just pull out black lotuses and shit cultivate or whatever the fuck fuck these digital only cards right in its fucking goat ass because i swear to fucking christ if I can do it, and if I remember it, put the meme up of the fucking scene in Godfather with Marlon Brando going, look how they massacred my boy. Like, they legitimately are going to murder Historic doing this to the point that I'm not even going to fucking play Historic anymore. And it sucks because I actually liked Historic because it was a perfect blend of Pioneer, which is a dead fucking format, by the way, and Modern, and it's just a perfect blend of the two on a digital only. And the best part is if I like a certain historic deck, like Meow Meow Motherfucker, um, <laughs> which is my cat tribal deck, um, I could legitimately buy those pieces, trade for those pieces, make this deck on paper, and play it. Will it win? Probably not. It, th- come on, the deck is named Meow Meow Motherfucker, and it's cat tribal and historic. But it is so, such a blast to play. And now we're about to do this perpetuity negative three, negative three counter bullshit that can only be available online. Or the numerous dumb shit that this fucking set is going to produce. Honest truth. I think there should be 
two different versions of historic now because of it historic without these bullshit cards and historic with these bullshit cards and if you like these bullshit cards go back to fucking hearthstone because the beauty of why arena has been so successful right now is because you have that one-to-one thing where i have the product digitally i can also get it physically and i can physically play this card these jumpstart cards don't do that for you folks um there's no way the Darvel can be printed. There's no way that card that can conjure up, I think the fucking dumbass mechanic is called, can be done. There is no easy way to do negative three, negative three in perpetuity counters on creatures. If you don't know what the perpetuity means is, and if you haven't been following up on historic jumpstart, in perpetuity means that particular card gets it forever. So say I have a 1-1 creature on the field. You hit it with a negative 3, negative 3 in perpetuity. It goes into the graveyard. I con- I, I somehow get that card back from my graveyard into the battlefield. But because it's always going to have that negative 3, negative 3 in perpetuity, it will immediately die or it is immediately going to be a negative two negative two creature i fucking hate that shit so much the darvel i'm dead serious the darvel the one the, the two abilities aren't that bad it's i think the middle ability where it brings this goddamn laundry list of shit where you have to accept like a term and a condition from Darvel, and there's like 15 terms and like 10 fucking conditions that you have to choose one of each. And it's an unprintable on paper card. And then there's the conjuring card, which can randomly bring in a card to your hand from a pull from a big ass spell book. So you can't do that on paper. And you not only backpedal or like completely negate the beauty of Arena to me which is the one-to-one digital-to-paper conversion, but you're also fucking gonna murder your goddamn best format that you've come up with. Because not for nothing, um, Pioneer doesn't exist anymore. And we'll get to that in a little bit. My biggest issue is the fact that it's gonna kill the format because there's a lot of... There's a lot of dumb shit that you can't do on paper, and a lot of people that play Historic only, when they eventually go to a store, they may be like, well, why? where's the Durville? Why can't I do this? Because fucking perpetuity and Darville and terms and conditions and fucking conjuring don't exist on paper. It's impossible. And there's some people that are like, if you don't like the card, don't play the fucking format. Fuck you. The format was fine before all this dumb bullshit got printed. You didn't need to do this, Wizards. You didn't need to kill fucking Historic just to fucking kill Historic. I think that's what you do. You're like Fight Club, okay? Where Tyler Durden or whatever is beating up the beautiful kid with the blonde hair. And at the end of it, you get up and he's all bloody and his face is all fucked up. And you just go, I wanted to destroy something beautiful. I think you destroyed something beautiful, Wizards. I'm going to hold you accountable for that, and the accountability, and, and that basically means I'm just going to neckbeard myself on the internet and complain about it for 23 and a half minutes. But honestly, though, like, I don't like Jumpstart Historic Horizons whatsoever. Modern Horizons 2, however, that shit was the bomb, <laughs> and Modern Horizons 2 was great. Unfortunately, I was the king of opening up Arid Mesas. Uh, <laughs> I did three pre-releases, and yeah... <laughs> three pre-releases and then like a week later uh with my girlfriend i traded in a bunch of cards i got from the pre-releases and kind of just like free rolled it into a draft <laughs> for modern horizons and then i bought a bundle and between all of that shit i opened four arid fucking mesas two retro two non-retro but because i'm a commander player now a lot i traded one of the retro frame arid mesas for dynamic tutor from Strixhaven, which I, Strixhaven, uh, sets just a C to me, it's just like a middle of the road set, it did some cool things, but it did a lot of dumb things, but I never got the draft it on paper, and I think that would have been a beautiful draft, especially with the, like, special cards that were in one per pack, I mean, I wish I could have drafted it, but I never got a, I wasn't, we didn't open up until Modern Horizons 2 came out. So I probably have the beer goggles of nostalgia on for Modern Horizons 2 because it was the first set. I was able to draft again with other people at a table using actual tactics 
that you would in a pod because Arena does things differently and I adore it. But here's a pro tip in Arena. Just draft the best deck. Don't hate draft. Don't do anything because you're not going up against those seven other players that you're with at the table in Arena. But whereas those hate draft mechanics actually fucking work in a pod. It's weird, but I stole the word draft either way. Arena shits um, between the bugs, the glitches, the quote end quote forced win rate, the quote end quote forced losses. You brought, you did something beautiful, and a uh, brawl hunter card historic happened, and this happens a day or so before you kill historic. So congratulations, you played yourself. That's all I'm gonna say about that because not for nothing, brawl historic. Um, it. I'm going to run into those fucking dumbass online only cards just immediately concede because fuck those cards very existence. A couple hours ago, um, showcase 2021 happened. I was just going to jump right back. Here's the best part. Uh, after the showcase 2021, uh, in a, in a store chat, I'm in, I'm like, all right, I'm a, my dumb ass is going to jump on an arena now. <laughs> fuck me. You know, uh, an eight hour, uh, downtime maintenance for all these, uh, historic horizons bullshits that's about to happen. Jumpstart historic horizons already fucking the program up and it's not even fucking out yet. Some of the things they did show, some of the stuff, they didn't spend a lot of time with Innistrad Midnight Hunt and Crimson Val because they kind of talked about it already a couple weeks ago. Um, those land, those basic lands, I need like a thousand of them. Stat. Like, I'm, I am fucking enamored with those lands. I'm gonna buy multiple boxes just for the lands. If I had the money, I would. Instead, I'm probably just gonna go to like Star City or something like that and buy like 50 <laughs> lands each for like too much money. You know, those lands are amazing looking. I'm not gonna lie. So far, what little they've revealed from the set, I'm digging. I'm digging. Uh, in that, showcase 2020 as well they talked about pioneer challenger decks for a dead format i even put in the group chat i was like i thought that format died a year ago but seriously like why pioneer i mean the deck lists aren't out there yet the price point isn't out there yet but you know if there's some modern staples in some of these decks Fucking buy them if you want to get into modern. It's probably going to be the cheapest point of entry to that because the last time they did something like this was the modern event deck. Yeah, I was around for that. Almost. I think it came out like right before or like right after I got back into the game, which was cons. I don't, I'm not going to bother to look up when it came out. I'm just saying the last time they did something like this in a format that wasn't standard or commander, to my knowledge, was the modern event deck. And that deck was the hot shit, probably the best deck Wizards came at, put out and released available to the public that you could just buy as is. But yeah, like, you know, if you want to get into modern, it might not be a bad idea buying some of these pioneer event decks just for modern staples or cards that you're not even thinking about. Um, in that modern red deck, there best be motherfucking four lightning bolts in that bitch. Is Lightning Bolt even legal in Pioneer? Let me check that up real quick. I need to check up Lightning Bolt. And why? Because if it's not, then uh, let, let's adjust what I just said. Is Lightning Bolt legal in Pioneer? Not legal in Pioneer, so never fucking mind. So there goes that. <laughs> you know, if there's some modern staples in there, get them. If they're shocks, if they want to reprint a... F no, fetches art have never been legal in Pioneer. If there's shocks in there, get them as well. It's probably, you know, especially if they've kept up with the price point and they're like 30 to 40 bucks for these things. If there's like a shock or two in there, fucking get them. Trade all the other cards that you don't feel like it for, you know, lightning bolts. I like the fact that the Lord of the Rings set is going to be its own set, but it's like modern it, it, i think it's going to be modern horizons 3 especially with the date the release date i really think unless they're going to be crazy and put out like 18,000 products which it's one thing about crimson val and midnight hunt i'm not happy with it's nine nine weeks in between set releases nine fucking weeks oh they're not even going to give us like three months in between standard sets with the Lord of the Rings set being modern, I, I really think it's just going to be Modern Horizons 3. Kind of like how Adventure in Forgotten Realms was 
Corset 2021 or 22. It's just, they, they just change the name. So, you know, that's cool. It's not standard legal. I'll be definitely getting it. I want the Warhammer 40k Commander decks. I'm not opposed to, like, that type of product. Like, the, whatever they're calling it, the Adventures Beyond bullshit, where they're doing the licensing deals for certain things. I'm okay with it being jumped straight to Modern or, you know, Commander. Because I'm not gonna lie, like, I had a flirtation with 40, uh, Warhammer 40k uh, a couple months ago where I was watching a lot of videos on it. I didn't want to pull the trigger and get some stuff immediately. Um, because it's a time consuming process and you know, I, you know, I'm lazy as shit when it comes to that. I knew what I was going to buy if I got into Warhammer and officially bought pro product, I was going to be orc boys. Um, I just love the lore. And if you don't know, here's the too long didn't read summary. Their shit's not supposed to work because it's not supposed to work, but because they have the power of belief, it works because they believe so hard. It works. That being said, it's actually just latent psychic abilities that they have and they're too too stupid to realize it, but because they believe it works. Like they fire guns without bullets because they believe so hard that this gun has bullets. They drive vehicles that don't have gas or an even axle to move the wheels, but because the power of belief, it works. So yeah, definitely want the orcs. New unset coming out, unfinite. The concept is kind of meh. I'm like, all right, you know, you saw Gardens of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok and you wanted to make... Jeff Goldblum's character in the Guardians of the Galaxy universe. I get it. That's all I have to say about that. And then uh, next year, uh, they dropped Return to Kamigawa, which everyone's psyched about. But let's be real here. It's revisionist history because most of you fucking hated Kamigawa when it came out. The Great Gatsby inspired set. Okay. And then Dominaria. We're going back. Dominaria. I love it. Love Dominaria. My my favorite set that has a place in my heart, as I said, to the group was Kansa Tarkir, because that's when I got back into magic. And Dominaria is a close second. I fucking love it. And then we're going back into the past for the Brothers War, which is Urza and Mishra, I think. Either way, if I got those names wrong, I don't care. War is not my thing. We're going back to see how see how and why Dominaria got so fucked up. Because if you don't know, Dominaria, not the best place to be. It's kind of super fucked up, <laughs> as always. And we're going back into the war between the two brothers that did it. That being said, if you want me to talk about Secret Lairs, my opinion of Secret Lairs, I never liked them, never will. Commander Black, I thought they discontinued the Commander products like that, where, you know, the, with the green... I, I, I thought they stopped doing that, so apparently they're going to keep doing it, but this time there's a foil and a non-foil version, and I kind of like it, because I'm not too into the foils, but you know, the Commander Black, I'll definitely pick up non-foil, depending on the price. All right, that being said, uh, leave comments down below, leave likes, leave dislikes, I don't care, subscribe, do whatever, I save it till the end of the video, because, uh, you know, I have a parody in my head of uh, wanting to do an intro... <laughs> And I'm going to do it at some point. My name's Dahmer, also known as Dom Douglas, and may your top deck always be mythic.